Today, we're on a mission to protect our underwater paradise. With every shot, we take back control one lionfish at a time. Beneath the serene beauty of St. Croix's turquoise seas lies a rapidly growing threat. Meet the lionfish, a mesmerizing yet destructive invader. Once our dive's complete, we'll play in the kitchen because there's no better way to beat them than to eat them. But why do we hunt lionfish? Learn why we take up arms against these spiky invaders and how you can become a guardian of the marine ecosystem. And as she walks off, me and Aiden, I'll be watching you too. Hey guys, welcome to another underwater adventure as we scuba dive into the coral reefs of the U.S. Virgin Islands in search of the notorious lionfish. This invasive species has been causing destruction to the delicate ecosystem of the reefs and it's up to us to help control their population. The visibility is looking pretty good today. It's just over 30 feet below me here and I can see clear to the bottom. It's hard to tell from this far up, but as we swim further over the reef, we can see the vibrant colors and diverse marine life that call this place home. There, to your left, is a school of Creole wrasse swimming just over the edge of the reef. But we're not just here to admire the beauty of the reef. We're here to hunt for some lionfish. After deciding that we've swam out far enough from the shore and with all this reef below, now seems like a good time to descend. On my way down, I go ahead and take in a complete view of my surroundings. Spin move. JP grabs the first lionfish and lucky there's another one near it hiding under the cover of the reef. These fish love to take cover, so if you're hunting for lionfish, you'll have to get used to peeking under the ledges, holes, and crevices of the coral reef. After we spare the lionfish, it goes into this fancy tube I'm carrying, which is called a zookeeper. It's the safest way to harvest these venom-filled critters. Sometimes the bigger ones take a bit more muscle to get past the funnel on the zookeeper. That's two caught in the first few minutes. This dive is already a success. Lionfish have 18 venomous spines. Sticking them into the zookeeper protects us from getting poked by their venom. When hunting for lionfish, you will need a pole spare. The tip on this spare has three prongs and is usually referred to as a paralyzer. When possible, I intentionally aim for the head because it keeps the meat clean and the head is tougher than the body's delicate white meat and will hold on to the spare better. As always, links to all the equipment used in this video can be found in the description below. It's getting tight in the main cabin, so I release the extender to allow for more occupants. This is an example of a bad shot. Lionfish meat is very tender, and since it's not a kill shot, there is a chance for the lionfish to wiggle itself free. The other issue is not having the proper positioning to get it into the zookeeper. Most times we are able to recover the lionfish even after they make an escape. They usually don't go too far. Thank you. 
you may find lionfish right in the sand, hovering the reef, or hanging upside down on the ledges. The key is to approach slowly and get your spear as close to them as possible before releasing. I love the view that the see-through tube provides, so I get to see the zookeeper filling up. I prefer to use the longer pole spear here in the Virgin Islands because more frequently the reef is made up of deep ledges and crevices that may be out of reach with the two-foot pole spear. The shorter pole spear has its advantages too because it's more flexible in tight spaces and easier to carry. I notice another lionfish just down below. This one quickly retreated into the hole on my approach. I can see that the reef has an opening on the next side and try to call out to JP to see if he can spot the lionfish. I didn't even notice this little one posted up here. After checking for openings in search of this lionfish, I return to the original entry spot and attempt to get the little one that's cornered itself into the hole. Due to the close proximity of the reef, it's hard to position this longer pole spear at the right angle, and then it happens. The band pops. Unfortunately, I don't have an extra with me. I'm going to have to try to make this work. I can still get some power by stretching one side of the band, but my accuracy may come into question. I clearly have this one pinned to the wall, but I'm worried that it's not a solid body shot and would rather not chance pulling the spare back and losing the fish. So I call JP over for assistance uh, to put a second shot on it. I'm thinking that maybe it's time that I start carrying two spares. Once he takes a shot, I remove my spare, but the lionfish still gets away. It looks like this one lives to see another day. On shallow reef, we often find lionfish on their ledges and in holes, where they like to hide and essentially keep a roof over their heads. A flashlight can be very useful for peering into the larger caves and holes to find lionfish. And always remember to look up because they will often be hanging at the top almost like a bat. Lionfish have been found in water depths from 1 to 1,000 feet, on hard bottom, 
mangrove, seagrass, coral, and artificial reefs such as shipwrecks. As we begin to turn the dive around and start making our way back to shore, I spot a colony of garden eels swaying in their holes, but they bury themselves as soon as I get close. Remember that I mentioned how lionfish enjoy structure and artificial reef? Here's an example as we find four small lionfish hanging out on this huge tire. I try to go for the biggest in the bunch first. My handicap pole spare has finally caused an issue with my hunting and I literally miss every last one of them. I'm 0 for 4 and decide to just observe my prey instead. I'll have to come back for these guys another time. There are another set of garden eels in the seagrass up ahead, and I'm determined to get them on camera. Now that the perceived danger has been removed, they pop their heads out one by one. The garden eel is a medium-sized fish that can grow up to a maximum length of 40 centimeters. These small eels live in burrows on the seafloor and get their name from their practice of putting their heads out their burrows while most of their bodies remain hidden. Because they tend to live in groups of up to a few hundred individuals, the eel heads growing in the bottom of the sea resemble a plant garden. They dig a burrow with their tails, which they coat with mucus to prevent it from collapsing. they prefer to bury themselves in the sand. Once they are big enough to dig a hole and settle down, they never leave home. An exception is made during mating season when they might come out to dig a new burrow closer to their partner. Garden eels catch their food drifting in the ocean current. They don't need to go far, but just like plants growing higher to get more sunlight, they need to protrude from the floor to get more food. Garden eels are not dangerous. Their mouth is too small to bite you and they only eat zooplankton. They have no venom, no spines, and very small teeth. Every lionfish we catch makes a difference in protecting the reef and its inhabitants. Lionfish are a major threat to the delicate ecosystem of the coral reefs. They have no natural predators in the Caribbean and their population is rapidly growing. That's why it's important for divers like us to do our part and help control the population. So, if you're ever in the U.S. Virgin Islands and want to go on a fun and exciting scuba diving adventure, consider joining a lionfish hunting trip. Not only will you be helping the coral reefs, but you'll also have a taste of the freshest fish in the Caribbean. Oh,
And we're back, people. Flattened. They're everywhere over there. Right. This is gonna be like Ryan Fish Central. We're in St. Croix. If you know where this is, then you know where it is. <laughs> we only uh -huh. captured one side of the Nice. Let me, I'm getting your close up. So you were with us today, folks. We got 16 lionfish over at the beach. I know there's plenty more in there. We dropped in and immediately got at least six in the in the um, zookeeper. Um, that's the spot, man. We're going to keep doing this until we bring down those numbers. I just know there's so many more down there. Um, hopefully, I'm going to make some um, coconut lionfish. I'll prep the veggies, which include bell peppers, onions, garlic, and thyme to add to the seasoning of the fish. Since we're not home, I have to make do with what's available in this kitchen. The fillet knife is pretty dull, so it takes me double the time to fillet the fish. But once it's all done, I'll make a batter and coat the fish with flour, panko breadcrumbs, and coconut flakes. Tonight, we'll be having coconut lionfish and tostones. If you want to see a full video on this being prepared, I will leave that at the end of the video and in the description below. There's lots of things you can do with lionfish in the kitchen. Let me know in the comments how you would like to see them prepared. Thanks for joining us on this lionfish hunting adventure. We hope to see you soon on the beautiful coral reefs of the U.S. Virgin Islands. Until next time, stay salty my friends. It doesn't end here. Click on the next video to keep the adventure going.